Liminal space photos have been around for far longer than the concept of the backrooms. The enigmatic feeling that liminality evokes within us is, I think, in a way, almost ingrained in people. So it goes without saying, liminal spaces themselves preceded the fad. You may already know, but this photo also predates the original lore of 2019, even though the image is what created the backrooms. Throughout time, an abundance of the most beloved liminal spaces have had their locations found, but the one that started it all has remained a mystery. Maybe you're of the opinion that it will stay that way forever, or you're someone who's more optimistic. Or maybe you think it's not even a real photo, which will partially debunk the render theory later on. We're going to be covering a lot. The history of leads, what we currently know, theories that have been disproven along with those that still hold merit, and all of the pieces that we have of this puzzling mystery. Let's just get right into it. I'd consider the source and location of the backrooms photo to be one of the biggest pieces of lost or unidentified media. You could say it's one of my holy grails. I remember seeing liminal spaces gain popularity in around 2016 with the whole Tumblr grunge aesthetic, and then a year or two later with Vaporwave. They weren't called that yet, and this is just an observation based on my personal experience. Then when Frutiger Air obtained its name, it sort of gave me another stepping stone from my liminal timeline that's happened throughout my life. I was born in 2003, so if you were born at an earlier time, then you've experienced more of this timeline that I literally just made up on my own. <laughs> but my point is, you can look back in retrospect and see the progression and cultural shifts throughout time that have led us to where we are now. Nostalgia is incredibly prevalent in every generation. It's why you grew up hearing about the good old days. Because the good old days are almost always going to be when you happened to be a child. Now that the 2000s and even most of the 2010s have become their own well-established decades, we can reminisce on them. They've grown into their own good old days for some of us. I think the liminal space trend has cultivated elements from the 80s to the 2000s and created this nostalgic outlet. I don't mean to sound fake deep, but liminal visuals have always been something I genuinely connect to. Like, they connect me to my inner orb, and I think it's awesome that people took this one photo and turned it into an entire thing. The tangent I just went on combined with the source being lost media makes it a topic that I'm extremely fascinated with and truth be told, pretty engulfed by. I've had dreams where I find a location. Regarding the whereabouts of the photo, while doing research in my own time, I realized there's a lot of conflicting, outdated, or simply misinformation that surrounds this mystery. This led me to want to make Make the most comprehensive video I could to further accelerate the search. Because it has yet to be found, I don't want anyone thinking there's some huge revelation and that I secretly found it because it is still lost. I did come across a few things that may be helpful though, which I'm excited to share with you all. If you don't already know, the backrooms originated from a 4chan post. Unbeknownst to us, this trivial little comment was the donning of what would later develop into a boatload of lore and an entire community. I mean, it's literally about to be an A24 film. But I thought it'd be way more fitting for Backrooms YouTuber himself, Brugley, to go over some of the aforementioned lore and inception of the Backrooms themselves. So with that being said, here he is. The concept of the Backrooms all began on May 12th, 2019 when an anonymous 4chan user posted the photo that would soon become the poster child for liminality. The vacancy of it, the array of outdated and worn down wallpapers covering the strangely placed walls, that mysterious greenish stare and a drop ceiling with the infamous yellow lighting. They titled the thread, Unsettling Images, and added a request for other users to post their own disquieting images that just feel off. A plethora of fitting images would follow, one actually being what is now known as level 188 of the back rooms, or the windows. But despite the endless unsettling images, the photo that OP originally attached piqued some of the user's interest more than the other contents of the thread. When asked, what is that, in reference to the photo, a user replied saying, quote, Looks like an office building gutted of all furniture and cubicles, end quote. I mean, what can I say? It's a 
pretty reasonable evaluation there. That's what it looks like. I mean, even to this day, that really is all you can deduct from it, visually, that is. You can hypothesize it looking like an old Sears break room, or a rundown church basement, or even a piece of urban exploration photography, or simply an office leasing advertisement. But no matter what vibes it gives off to you, it's still an empty and desolate room that invokes that liminal feeling within all of us. Then, with the next reply, the back rooms as we know it would be born. I'm sure you've all heard the original story a billion times, but it reads as follows. Quote, If you're not careful and you no-clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you'll end up in the back rooms, where it's nothing but the stink of old moist carpet, the madness of mono yellow, the endless background noise of fluorescent lights at maximum hum buzz and approximately 600 million square miles of randomly segmented, empty rooms to be trapped in. God save you if you hear something wandering around nearby, because it sure as hell has heard you." End quote. That's still such a good quote, by the way. Now, shortly after, this little 4chan comment would pick up and start dispersing all over the internet. And with that, the phenomenon began. Fast forward to four years later, and there's hundreds of levels that have been created amongst the community, an abundance of insanely good renders, and a whole lot of lore, and it shows no signs of stopping anytime soon. Now while this was the start of the backrooms we know and love today, this isn't the earliest found post of the image. It had actually been circulating on 4chan for, at a minimum, a year before this post. And it wasn't long until the question was raised. Where was this photo taken? People wanted to hunt down the origin of this image and ultimately find out the real life location of it. The question and inevitable search added to the mystery in a sense. Some say it's symbolic and even sentimental how the location of the original backrooms has remained lost, with some having the opinion that it's almost meant to be because it saves that bit of mystery while others are determined to find the original source and place of the image, and they think it would make the tale of the backrooms more interesting to tell. It all depends on how you look at it. But whatever your opinion is, you really can't help but wonder the true story behind the peculiar photo. And on the off chance that the building it resides in hasn't been demolished or renovated to an unrecognizable degree, we'd be able to say pretty confidently that it would be where the so-called real backrooms would be. Despite these empty photos that just didn't feel quite right being around the internet for years prior, the term liminal space became well known to describe them, and the back rooms were now officially founded. A lot of the hype for the initial interest in the search was thanks to David Crypt. I think David helped gain traction to the back rooms in general and is a significant part of its history. We're going to go through the rather convoluted history of leads and most of their inevitable debunkings, but that doesn't mean you should lose hope because there are still some some valuable leads. Let's dive into the saga of search efforts. Shortly after David Crypt made his first video on the location of the backrooms photo, someone reached out to him saying it was a building in Ogdensburg, New York. A viewer named Dylan Patterson, who lived near it, volunteered to explore said building. This was in the early days of the search when people were not anticipating it being a multi-year long journey. It was easy to take what the person who contacted David said at face value. But after Dylan visited the location and even filmed different areas for us, it confirmed confirmed that this was not the place we were looking for. These photos posted to Flickr in 2009 of an office called Delvinia were brought to people's attention. The vibe is similar, but that's all and was later revealed to be completely unrelated. There was a second Flickr album of a former Sears which ended up not being the right place either, but I'd say the two most common theories have always been an office undergoing renovation or a dead Sears. 
Then there was the Collins cold storage fiasco. Someone randomly put the backrooms photo on a Google review for a storage place in Georgia. Whether they did it as a joke or a deliberate hoax, I'm unsure of, but when people found the photo associated with Collins cold storage, they wondered if it was legitimate. After contacting the owners, they confirmed that this room was nowhere inside their building. I still see sporadic comments online saying that the photo is of Collins cold storage. And this happens with a lot of the locations that have been debunked. I think it's because the attention to the initial finding is usually larger than when people disprove it. A lead is more exciting, so that's what people tend to give notice to. Another example of this is the James A. Farley post office lead. In January of 2011, movie location scouter Nick Carr posted an article on his website titled, Exploring the Nearly Empty Post Office Building on 8th Avenue. This is a post office in New York. If you scroll down for a minute, you'll see this image. If you zoom in and tilt it, I mean, it looks strikingly similar. There's things that don't flawlessly line up, but when you take renovations into consideration, it's obviously not impossible that this could be where the backroom's photo was taken. Well, Nick, the man who photographed and explored the post office himself, let the search team know that it was in fact not where it was taken. But very recently, this finding resurfaced the backroom subreddit. It however, unfortunately, is not the answer to our mystery. And there's been a multitude of offices or buildings found that honestly aren't really worth specifically mentioning because they've all been incidental. There was a Craigslist shitpost ad for a three bedroom vintage home. Having said that, the photo literally could have originated from a Craigslist ad in like 2008 or something. There's genuinely no telling until we actually find it. Of course, we have all of the people who claim they were the ones that originally took the photo. The story I chose to go more in depth about is Mark the Redditor, the truth behind the original Backrooms photograph. Mark here claims that he saw his nephew watching a Backrooms video, when this caused him to make him remember a single photo he took over 20 years ago in 2001. Noting, a lot of people have been scraping their nails just to know what was the location. He goes on to explain that he took it with his Sony camcorder for his estate agency business. He gave said camera to his son, which he forgot to take out the SD card, so can't actually prove it and didn't retrieve the SD card from his son. Also, he's from the UK, therefore the North American Type B plug featured in the photo I guess makes logical sense to Mark. After users pointed this discrepancy out, I think he said he was in America at the time, but r slash backrooms is actually still private at the time of me recording this and the cache version doesn't show all of the replies. Either way, Mark went dark after and never delivered. While not an intentional hoax, a Backrooms ARG hosted via Google Earth was stumbled upon, and when the upload date claimed it was taken in 2011, some people were bewildered, but later found the YouTube channel the ARG belonged to, Billy LaRobot, and this was quickly debunked. You may be thinking, all of these things so far have been blatantly put useless. <laughs> like, what's the fun in that? Is there anything worthy of taking into consideration anymore? Is this all that we know after four entire years? It was. For a while, there were no substantial findings, leads, or anything really, besides dissecting the photo's visual aspects like how there is a stare. But then in July of 2022, after scouring through endless 4chan archives, a 2018 cursed images thread was found and it contains the earliest known occurrence of the photo. Yes, it's still from an anonymous user and there's no other context provided, which might make you assume this is also a bit useless. But then people paid attention to the file name. It looks like a string of random numbers, but there's more to it than that. I guess when you download a photo from 4chan, the file name converts to a Unix timestamp. Unix timestamps let you know the exact time a photo was downloaded, like down to the nanosecond. This string of numbers converts to July 15th, 2012. What this means is there's a good chance this user downloaded the backroom's photo from a 4chan post all the way back 11 years ago. Finding the 2012 4chan post is seemingly our best chance of ever getting an answer to where this photo was taken. The issue with this is the only way we can find it is through 4chan archives, most of which start after 2012 or archives prior to 2012. This unfortunately makes it difficult. I've done a little sifting, but if you're interested in searching yourself, I will link a Lost Media Wiki article that has more information on what archives to look through. 
After this discovery, a YouTuber made a video alleging he was investigating the data of the earliest known photo. His results say it was taken on a Sony Cybershot in 2002. At first glance, this is a great finding, but he made a couple mistakes in the forging of data. Firstly, use the wrong file name. Secondly, when you extract data from a photo, it's not going to say Sony Cybershot, it's say the actual specific model as you can see here. I don't want people like commenting stuff on this guy's video. I kind of didn't want to put this in out of fear of people doing that, but it's been shared online as true, so I felt I should clarify it. The last hoax I will clarify is the CapCut video that was posted in May of 2022. It's just an edit, it simply isn't real. And I'm sure there's other renders out there that have claimed to be real, but as of today, there is no authentic found footage of the backroom's photo's location. While on the topic of renders, Jaden Salads is here to go over why it almost definitely isn't one. If you bring up the location of the backroom's photo online, nine times out of 10, you're going to run into at least someone who says, Oh, it's just a render. Like, why are you guys even looking for this? But when you take the July 2012 Unix timestamp into consideration, it's pretty easy to realize that your average person online in 2012 couldn't make such high quality realistic renders. It's way more common nowadays with the popularity of Blender, and the internet is just full of talented animators with no formal 3D animation education. So, it admittedly makes sense why some people jump to that conclusion. But 11 years ago, the internet just wasn't like that. In my opinion, it seems really unlikely that there wouldn't be a single Photoshop mistake featured in this now 11-year-old image. And another thing I see is some people think the backroom's photo looks too weird to be legit. But if you look at office space listings from the 2000s and early 2010s, you'll come to realize that sometimes the lighting genuinely is that yellow. A great example of this is a 2010 YouTube video of a Las Vegas office space. I mean, if that doesn't look like the backrooms, then I don't know what to tell you. Whether you realize it or not, liminal spaces are all around us, and a majority of the most popular ones have turned out to be real locations, even if it took a while to find them. There is also JPEG information that you can extract from the 2018 photo, which has specifications that are exclusive to a certain set of cameras from the early 2000s. There's going to be more on that later, but the point is, it would be a pretty elaborate fake for 2012 standards. Along with this, there's significantly more evidence towards it being an authentic photo of a legitimate place, rather than it being a render or some Photoshop. I wouldn't be surprised if the original photo is slightly altered, but I'd say that there's almost no reason to assume it's fake. I'd just like to stay hopeful for the idea that one day, this location will be found. So we know the debunked locations that it isn't, the current earliest found photo, and some vague info on the JPEG data. It's time to examine the other known facts about the image. I made a sorta of joke about the green stare because it is frankly a bit amusing to inspect every crevice, but there are a few aspects of the photo that I think are worth mentioning. There's this object attached to the ceiling that is probably either a detector of some kind or a surveillance camera. To me, it looks like a camera, which is going to be more prevalent in some kind of commercial or retail space rather than a basement or something. The strips on the wall could be wire covers, just the design of it, or something that was brought to my attention thanks to a comment on Quill's video that I think is a possibility. They said it looks like chair guards, and from a distance on a shitty camera, it definitely does. This would reinforce the idea of an office or Sears break room theory, or like the commenter said, a conference room in a hotel. The wall that doesn't match the ceiling and various wallpapers leads me to think it was a renovation project, but there's evidently no way to know for sure. And there are five different wallpapers. The main chevron pattern one is the one that is visually distinct. I think finding the wallpaper has the potential of drastically helping the search. It still hasn't been found. All of the ones known online are just fan-made textures. There was a possible wallpaper finding in Virtual Carbon's Discord though, and his content has focused on like the facts of the photo, so I thought he'd be great at explaining all of that to you guys. The strange wallpapers are an element of the photo that tends to draw people's attention. Throughout the search, people have tried to find the source of the main one, regrettably with no luck. A member of my Discord did find a 1984 Sears winter catalog that featured a wallpaper named French Beige. As you can see, it looks eerily similar to the wallpaper on the left wall in the image. 
This would also point towards the background's photo being taken in an old Sears after all, much like people have speculated over the years. Something you might not realize about this picture is that when you look closely, you can see three walls on the right side of the room. Knowing this gives us a better idea on what the room would look like from another angle, in case we were to come across a different image of it. The lighting reflecting on the floor could also be coming from windows, so it might not be a windowless area like it appears to be. The building has to be in a country that uses Type B outlets. These are most commonly found in North America, but there's a few other countries that use Type B plugs. There's a map online that shows you the different plug types that countries use, and you can see other countries like Japan, Liberia, and the Philippines all using Type B outlets. Despite this, people usually think it was taken in North America, and a large portion of places searched have been in America and Canada. The camera it could have been taken on thanks to the JPEG info extracted from the compression are models that range from the year 2000 to 2006. This would mean that the photo wasn't taken before 2000 and suggests that even though it was posted on 4chan in 2012, it could have been taken even earlier than that. Lastly, there is a Mediafire link that claims to be the 2012 image, but the poster forgot the EXIF data and it has yet to be found. Finding the 2012 photo is currently the most promising lead. I mentioned towards the beginning of this video that I found some stuff on my own time that could prove fruitful. A few are merely theories or search ideas that aren't groundbreaking, but I think I came across something that could actually be worth looking into. I'm going to share with you everything I found while on my searches. I thought it'd be better to get the little theories out of the way. These are things I found interesting that could have something to do with the back rooms, but also might be completely unrelated. Worlds.net looks uncannily like the back rooms. That has already been said, but I found a specific 4chan post from 2015 that seriously shows the resemblance. How does this actually help? Well, I had the idea that since Worlds.net seems to be popular on 4chan, maybe a user replied to the original 2012 post relating its appearance to Worlds.net. Might not have happened at all, but I had that thought in regards to searching keywords through archives. There's a couple other 4chan posts that gave me ideas. This insecure cam thread full of images with negative emotional auras made me wonder if it's possible the photo could be from an insecure camera, but given the angle it's taken at, I don't think it's probable, but I figured I'd throw it in the video just in case. This 4chan user on a thread from 2019 gave some insight on the beginning of these liminal space photos being shared on the site, saying the idea of wrong reality empty space long predates the backroom's mini pasta, as well as the Stanley Parable game. They remember that on a really early X, there would be threads for subtle, scary pictures, a lot of the ones being empty rooms, like are now associated with the backroom's idea. They think it was originally based in spooky urban exploration. Adding this phenomena of empty, wrong-feeling photos was a thing on X and urbex communities long before liminal spaces. They finished their comment by saying, it's actually fun to see a little more of a myth attached, especially because there's lots of potential for more Stanley Parable-esque games. After reading this, I'm confident in saying the 2012 post is likely from an X thread or specifically has to do with urban exploration. And Liminal Boy commented this on the Lost Media Wiki article. I remember seeing this image from time to time for years as well before the whole backroom thing, though it was still always presented as an unnerving picture whenever I saw it. Definitely older than 2012. I want to say there was an old something awful thread about creepy images where this showed up. It had a thread with images like Saturn devouring his son, those old family photos where people had their taxidermy dead children in them, stuff like that. I think the original context is that since the room had weird angles or was too open, or like you could always see the corners of the other rooms or something like that, made it a creepy place to physically be in. Should be taken with a grain of salt due to faulty memories and all that, but I thought it was interesting. Now, the 2002 date we talked about earlier was forged. But 2002 would make sense, given half of the possible cameras were models prior to 2003. I'm sure you've taken notice of all of the Sears mentions. The Kmart in the town I grew up in had a Sears, as did plenty of others. You want to know what happened in 2002? 
284 Kmart's closed. All of which are on this list that I'll link in the description in case anyone also is interested in diving into it. Just by going through the first handful on the list, I found an article about remodeling one of the Kmart's and also a JCPenney that replaced another with tons of Google review photos. If it was a Sears or Kmart break room type thing that was closing down, it makes sense why it looks so empty and weird. And some of the locations you can definitely find info on. I'm not saying this is going to lead to the back rooms being found, but I thought it was cool. Lastly, for basic search tips, I've been looking through YouTube videos of building leasings using the before search function, and I found tons of similar looking places. Same goes for reverse image searching on Yandex but obviously none have been the location. And with that, I've got nothing else. I think I covered it all, but let me know if I didn't. Lost media and liminal spaces have become huge things amongst the internet, and considering my channel consists of both, they're so fascinating to me. The Backrooms is even making its way out of the internet bubble with Kane Pixel's film, and I can't help but wonder what the person who made the original 4chan post thinks of the fact they're technically what started it. And I also wonder if the person who took the photo is secretly aware of it and just not telling us. There's no way to know for sure unless we find the location ourselves and put the mystery to rest. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it can help the search in some way. When it comes to these pieces of lost media, I like to be the kind of person that is optimistic and thinks anything can be found, but sometimes that simply isn't the case. There may be one day when the location of the backroom's photo is common knowledge or maybe it'll stay cryptic and unknown forever. Either way, thank you.